Hello, welcome. Take a moment, try this problem out, and then press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, so we're given the graph of a function, and we're told that the cardboard there's a cardboard box manufacturing company, and it's building boxes with the length of x plus 1, width of 5 minus x, and a height of x minus 1. The volume of the box is modeled by the function below. Okay, so before I even look at this, I'm going to make a note to myself that we're looking at volume, and volume equals length times width times height. So in our case, the length is x plus 1, and the width is 5 minus x, and the height is x minus 1. So I'm going to enter that in my calculator. So I want to have this function so I can analyze anything they throw at me. And I'm going to say, all right, well, I've got x plus 1, I've got 5 minus x, and I've got x minus 1. So this is the function. And then I'm going to graph it just to see what it looks like. All right, compare our graph to theirs. And just to be fancy, let's make our window the same. So they're going from about, what is that, negative 8 to 20. Okay, we can do that. So let's go to our window. On the y-axis, let's go, let's make it really close. Let's go negative 10, so negative 8, and then go up to, let's say, 22. And then on the x, it looks like they're going from negative 2 up to 6. So let's go, I don't know, negative 4 up to 8. Let's just make sure we capture that. The scale is by 1. All right, hit enter. We'll graph it. We should get a similar picture to what I see here. Yes, there it is. So really similar. On, they want to know on, what do they want to know? On which interval is the volume of the box changing at the fastest average rate? So my first technique then is just to look at this and say, all right, well, um, if I estimate my rates here, right, what, what am I looking at? Let's start with blue. And let's thin our line up. Okay. From one to two. So I'm going to, I would use a ruler if I was doing this on, by hand. You can barely see it, right? But that, that line right there, let me go make that a little bit thicker. That's our average rate of change. Our average rate of change is slope. And we're looking at the slope between the inputs of 1 and 2. That's too thick. That's not going to help us. We'll find a happy medium here. OK. So the average rate of change would be the slope of this line from 1 to 2. That's choice 1. Choice 2 is from 1 to 3.5. Let's change colors to red. From 1 to 3.5. And this is where I have a little trouble here. Let's see. OK. I can clearly tell the slope of that line is less than the other, right? When you say average rate of change, uh, we're talking about the slope between these inputs of 1 and 3.5. And that's less. So 2 is out. That's less. Then I go from 1 to 5. OK, let's go to green. From 1 to 5, that's a 0 rate of change. That's th the lowest so far. And then from 0 to 3.5. OK, let's go, let's use pink. 0, here's the input of 0 is it all the way down here, up to 3.5 here. Okay, so it looks clear to me that choice 1 has the greatest rate of change, and that's the one I would pick. But um, let's talk about, let's say it's just closer and you can't tell by drawing the lines, what do we do? On the calculator, we entered all of our data. Let's use that. On the calculator, if you hit second graph, you get a table. And there might be all kinds of values here. You might want to change the increments. I would hit the plus button and type in 1 to go up by 1s. And I'm stuck on the point 2s here. So if you have any kind of weird setting or you can't press the plus button to fix your increment, the distance between the x values, just hit second window because that, that has table set. So I want to start at 0. That's where I start. And I want to go up by 1s. OK, great. Now, if I go to my tables now, it should be fixed. And what this, what's not nice about this is that you can see your inputs and your outputs. So if I go from the first interval was from 1 to 2. So I'll just show you the 1, 0 is the first point. So that means we're going from the point 1, 0 to the point where the input's 2. OK, well, if you look at our graph, it goes to 2, 9 which is hard to tell on the graph. Maybe it's exactly 9, I don't know. So it goes from 1, 0 to 2, 9. And that slope is the output subtracted, 9 minus 0. So I'll write this over here. 9 minus 0 over 2 minus 1. So it has a slope of 9 over 1, or just 9. And that's pretty high. Now if we go to, let's say, 1 and 3.5. Or let's go to 1 and 5, because our table is already set for that. So if we go to 1 and 5, 
I'm going from 1, 0 to 5, 0. So for example, if I had to calculate these slopes, I could do this. So from 1, 0 to 5, 0, 1, 0 to 5, 0, 0 minus 0 up top, our output 0 minus 0, that's a 0, over 5 minus 1 is 4, and that's 0 over 4, or a slope of 4, a 0, not 4. 0 divided by 4 is 0. Psh, cross it out, 0. So you could actually go through all of these and find the average rate of change if the graph was not helpful enough. All right, I hope that helped.